Hi, everyone. I'm Pip from Seymour Digital Media. You're listening to Know How Marketing Lab podcast. This podcast brings together different experts in marketing from our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. Each week we get on here and we talk about something search marketing like Google ads or SEO, social media marketing from Facebook to TikTok or website marketing. If you're a marketer or aspiring marketer, a business owner or entrepreneur, this podcast for you. We're going to share the best SEO, search, social uh, and website strategies. We share tips and hacks, Google ad strategies, what's going on in the current market. Each week we discuss something exciting and awesome in marketing. And my name is Rena Little from Little Works Indie Media and Greg is here. Greg, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Greg from Original 72 Creative. Awesome. Welcome. And today's topic is blogging and we're going to go through blogging, the whole thing about blogging. And then next week, we're going to be talking about distribution. So this is a really great one to pay attention to if you're interested in getting some bits and pieces about blogging that will get you to the next level in your marketing. Because most people really just function in the way that they are trying to get information out to their audience. And they focus on being the purveyor of information. And they're not really thinking about how the blog actually works in the world and with marketing and on your WordPress site or whichever site you're using. So Greg, where are we starting again? Well, I think uh, one of the things at the very top was to think about creative and choosing the right topics and things. So maybe we chat on that. Great. Okay. Well, one of the things that I get back from my tutoring clients or training clients is that When they sit down to write their blog articles, all of a sudden they hit blank. They don't really know what to write about. They don't know where to start. There's so much information. And generally when I'm training people, I do get that feedback. They're always like, I don't know where to start. When you sit down and you organize your content calendar, that's where all of your information is going to pile out. You're going to start organizing topics and you want to organize them according to your different categories. Perhaps you have different categories in your business that you could cover that would use different keywords. We want to make sure we're getting a really good plan of topics across time and across categories. So for example, if you're a marketing company, you don't want to be focusing only on Facebook all the time. You want to make sure you're going to hit some of those other topics like Twitter or or, or MailChimp or whatever other ways that you do business and can teach people. And then what I do and what I recommend to people is like, just dump, have a dump, spend about 30 minutes brain dumping onto a piece of paper, write it all out and then organize your categories. And if you are like me and things hit you when you're in the world, say when I do my training, something will come to me or someone will ask me a really great question that I hadn't thought about how to answer. And What I usually do is I keep a little record. I've got a notebook with a, um, with a folder uh, on my phone, uh, one of those notebook apps. And, uh, generally I'll just jot down a couple of sentences to trigger my, my memory. Maybe I'll take a photo if it's about something in the world so that I have a photo (laughs) to put with my blog Mm. post and I'll just bank that. And then when you sit down and you organize your content calendar, which should be the next step, you want to make sure that you are pulling all of your best content. So stick to your best content and your best content looks like something that's relevant to your topic, to your industry, something that um, people haven't really been talking about too much because you'll find that you uh, will be offering something that's unique, something that's out there in the world already, but you have a different perspective or you disagree with, or you might have something to add to it. Those kinds of things, wherever you're going to be able to add your own value. I would say something that solves the problem or something that answers a question. Yes. Yes, definitely. And that moves us into the second part. So you've got all of your topics. You know what you want to help your clients discover. And then you want to make sure that you're writing your blog article to answer those questions that people are going to be putting into the search engine. So not just... Uh, many people think about solving their clients' problems, but you also want to be solving problems for people who aren't yet your clients 
That's the point. Get them to your website so that perhaps you can do business with them. So the creative That's part. That's an interesting comment. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've ever thought about it specifically hmm. that way, but coming at the article as someone who hasn't worked with you or is looking to work with you, what are the specific questions that they typically ask and yeah. catering to those? Because that will give you that much better SEO results in people yes. who will be new clients finding you. That's a, yes. that's a great tip. Yeah. And you want to make sure, and that's why I'm talking about with blog articles, you always want to make sure that you're adding your own value. If you're taking somebody else's blog article and rewriting it, technically that's plagiarism and not really a good look, especially if you're not citing. You can take pieces from other people's work, paraphrase and cite. That's always good. But what the meat of the article should be are your own ideas, your secret sauce, whatever it is that you're adding to it. Otherwise, what happens from a user experience is if I'm asking a question, putting it out, um, putting it into the Google search engine, I'm going to probably read the top three blog articles or articles. And if they all say the exact same thing, I'm going to be annoyed because that just tells me that it's the same stuff regurgitated on every site, right? And nobody really likes that. So that's really not a very good look. And the blog post that always gets my attention is the one that is actually does solve the problem. So they do that thing where they, they solve the problem. They sound like they know what they're doing and very confident. They've organized it very easily for me. And three, they've added their own bit that I'm not going to get from anywhere else. And that would make me want to reach out to that particular person rather than any of the other blog articles I've read on the same topic. Mm -hmm. so, uh, one of the things I've always struggled with, with uh, for, for content related stuff or, or coming up with blogs, which is the main reason I don't have a blog for myself <laughs> is that I feel like everything's almost been said for, for the web yeah. development community. And when I see it online, I'm like, well, why bother writing about that? It's already been written about. It's just going to be my point of view. Like what, what can I put a spin on it? Do you have a, a suggestion of, uh, for yeah. people that they have a lot of content that's similar to what's out there? Is there a, yeah. do you feel there's a that, good way or, a, yes. you know, a proper way of basically putting out the same information, but with a twist? Yes, 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 yes. So that's really common, especially when you're doing kind of educational pieces like how to's, for example. So the how to is not really going to change that much, really, from one oh. writer to the next, right? But what's going to change a lot or what can change is the why. So share your why. Why do you do it like that? Is there something that you like to do that's slightly different than other people? So for example, if you're teaching people how to add your alt text to your photo, including the bit where you want to change the name of the photo before you upload the photo. That's not part of the general how to that's a, that's, that's like pulling information from somewhere else. Or a different example might be we do uh, SEO people um, will recommend putting in alt text on photos for SEO purposes. But maybe you want to also add in the accessibility piece and then you can add examples. That's another way of adding in uh, unique content. Your examples or your case studies are in other ways of mm -hmm. creating unique content. Your opinions, those are unique content if your opinion is unique. All of that kind of stuff, that can really add. So instead of just a basic, and you get that actually, it happens a lot on uh, recipe blogs if you see those. You know, they have a really organized structure, particular structure. It doesn't really switch that much between blogs where they tell like these giant stories, right? Before mm -hmm. you get, and it's actually kind of annoying. It, it does a couple of things. It helps with SEO. Oh, but it, say, yeah, <laughs> it is annoying. It, you, you might not want to do it to this extent, but what that does is it allows way more space to put ads on your page, which is primarily why they do it in particular, because that's the only way that they're making money with their recipes. But um, perhaps what you want to do is just put in a little anecdote. Those, those blog posts, what they do is they put in the anecdotes, they put in the uh, substitutions for you, they put in the 
things that they've noticed. Can you freeze it? Can you not freeze it? Can you, you know what I mean? All of those kinds of details that are helpful, but not necessarily part of the general how-to. So anecdotes are great and they only take a sentence or two generally and you don't have to fill the page because generally if you're running a business blog, you're not putting other people's ads on your business blog because that's not particularly great for branding. Yeah, and for the most part, those types of things, like they're they're trying to get people to the site and keep them on the site. So they have yes. this big, long thing to have yes. a longer page reading time and, and more space to get additional ads and things like that. Most people aren't going to be, you know, developing pieces for that purpose. No. It's more about the writing and, and what the yep. what you're putting out there. Um, and the media. users. Yeah, and the media. So the other piece that I, I totally forgot to mention, which is important to put uh, unique content up, is video. So if you can get a video to accompany your blog post, generally you don't want your blog post to be transcript of the video. Um, you want the blog post to kind of recap what's in the video in a different way, saying it in a different way, like organizing it. Because on video, we tend to ramble we don't always do full sentences all that sort of stuff so transcripts aren't particularly great experience for readers but you know a summary of what's been said then some additional information maybe a handy checklist things that you can't put in a video are really great for blog posts and downloadables if you really want to provide good value for your your reader and you've got a checklist, it's nice when they want to come back and do that checklist. But let's say they don't work that way. Let's say they're a little bit more old school. Maybe you want to provide a um, downloadable checklist so that they can print it off and use a pen, <laughs> as some people prefer, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Think about all of your users and who you're targeting. For me, I target a lot of uh, women solopreneurs who are not particularly tech savvy or not confident in technology. And so therefore, my blog should have things that are going to satisfy the way that they're already working in addition to what I'm trying to get across. Spreadsheets, things like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's the kind of creative side of it. But we have a lot to cover in the technical side of it, too, don't we? Yeah, we ha we sort of talked about the mechanics of writing, uh, as well as yeah. images and copyright. Well, um, I think I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna tick two of my approaches to writing the copy because there really should be an entire workshop on how to write blog posts. But there are two yeah. tips that I think are the best, and that happens with the H2 tags, which are subheadings, because you always want subheadings H2 tags in your blog posts. And we always think if you're, if, you, if you're an academic writer and you, especially if you're in the social sciences or sciences, you're going to have your title is going to be introduction. Then it's going to be like something basic, like the five key points. And then it's, but it's not going to say of what, there's no like major nouns in there, right? And mm -hmm. then it'll say conclusion. But what we want, really want to do is to flip that around and, and be specific. So you really want to include your main points in your subtitles so that they become the answer to a question that someone's going to put into Google. So for example, instead of putting the, the five top tips to write, that's too broad. You might want to say um, the five top tips to write creatively for your mm -hmm. blog posts or for your, uh, Audience. for to write for, yeah, you could write for, uh, social media newbies or something like that. Like make sure that you're putting specifics in your H2 tags that are going to help you with your keywords that you're trying to rank for. That's the first thing. The second thing is you're going to want to proofread. And the best way to proofread, if you don't have somebody to do it for you, is to read it aloud. Because when you read it in your head, your your eye and brain will, will um, correct your, you'll correct, your brain will correct the mistakes as you read it. If you know, when you see those little things that go around on social media, when there are like no vowels in anything, and it says, if you can read this, you're the smartest person in the world, um, when actually yeah. pretty much everyone can do that. So your brain is actually designed to do that. So don't read silently when you're proofreading. Read aloud, because then you will be able to 
your, your tongue will trip over the mistakes. Want to know more about SEO? We've got a class for that. Our mission is to educate students about the right tools, techniques, and strategies to grow their businesses using the most up-to-date search engine marketing optimization techniques and tools. Find out more at knowhowmarketinglab.com. When I'm writing, sometimes I uh, will skip complete words. Yes. Like yes. I'm, like I'm 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 writing something and I'm thinking about what I'm writing and I know yes. I thought it but I didn't actually write the word. <laughs> Get it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. sometimes we're in a rush. Sometimes for whatever reason our brain doesn't help us because it likes to fill in for us and that's exactly right. It's really hard to edit your own work. That takes a long time to develop that skill. I I I remember going through my own grief trying to, you know. Uh, trying to learn that skill. And uh, I don't know if I'm still successful at it, but I certainly can proofread other people's work. But yeah, so definitely read it aloud and read it in a normal reading voice. Don't speed read. That's going to, it's also going to, because you do skip when you speed read anyways. So those are the two things. And then we should really talk about, I know that Pip's done one on keyword research. So we'll probably link to that because you're going to want to actually make sure that you're doing your keyword research for your blog articles, that'll really help you. And I generally write the outline of my blog. Yeah. And just at the same time. Note that on that. Yeah. I, I would, I would say <laughs> going into it, you should know the keyword that you're going to be optimizing a specific post yeah. for, for, Definitely. A specific blog for, for the most part. Yeah, so you might know the short keyword, but you might not have settled on the long long tail keyword at that particular minute. But you definitely yeah. want, so so for me, it's a push and pull. So I'll sort of start with the short keyword, then I'll start to build my my um, foundation. So what the, I'll build my outline and then all of a sudden it'll become super obvious who I'm writing it for. And then the long tail keyword will present itself. And then that goes in the title and variations go throughout the H2 tags and the alt text, all of that stuff, it goes in your meta tag, all those good places that we know to put our keywords. And, um, and that's really important. Oh, oh, and there was one other thing about the building of the of the blog post that is good to know, you really need to be familiar with copyright laws in terms of where you're getting your images from, please absolutely be clear uh, that you have the the rights to images, even ones that are marked commons, copyright commons, um, um, creative commons, that they sometimes still have the attribution requirements. And if you're skipping the attribution requirements, there's actually, I think I've talked about this guy once already on a live here, but this guy in Europe, this is his own, his only way of making money is by catching people mismanaging his photos and not putting the proper attribution. And he charges people like, I think it's $900 uh, for the retroactive annual license. And then you're you're hooped because it costs way less to buy a photo, (laughs) right? It costs way less. So please don't make that mistake. Be absolutely sure that you're doing it correctly. Better to take your photos. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of people caught with that, but... I've maybe over my 20 plus years, I've had uh, two people, I believe, who have had issues with um, with images, which I think that's pretty good over 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 20 years. And only two of my clients have have come across an issue where someone's contacted them about copyrighted images. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. For me, it's been two also. Um, and, um, one was unnecessary. The other one was a a company absolutely, (laughs) absolutely took the image. They just thought that they, if they found it on the web that they could just, and it, they could actually physically download it, that it was theirs to download. So that's, I actually have a really great story about that, but it's probably a little (laughs) bit too long for (laughs) (laughs) next time. I'll tell tell you off camera, maybe. (laughs) Yep. All right. Okay. So, uh, on images, um, I mean, we should probably go through the basics of obviously naming your images with your keywords in it and obviously using the alt text to uh, 
to describe the image um, as well. Now, I know the alt text of an image is really meant to describe what that image is. And I know a lot of SEO people basically just keyword stuff that instead of describing. Do you have any comments on Yes, I try and find a middle ground. So my idea is that if you can, if you can actually describe it with your keyword in it, that's ideal. Um, but yeah. putting a whole bunch, like I, I actually just went through a site and they somebody put like Va- Vancouver, British Columbia on every single photo, just because they were really wanting to rank for local. And I don't even know. We'd have to ask Pip if that's helpful. I really don't think it is. I think stick to what it's used for is prime function is for accessibility. So we want to make mm-hmm. sure we're actually doing that, especially since there are so many rules now and legislation is being passed in British Columbia and Ontario about accessibility and making sure that websites are accessible. So yes, definitely use accessibility as your number one, but uh, number two, if you could try and stick a keyword in, that's great. But number three, if you're, organized for accessibility google actually that's what google wants right now google is really privileging websites that are organized for accessibility and there is actually a bc grant to help you pay for the upgrades to get your website accessible so there's that is still available for anyone that's interested so i actually think that keyword stuffing and alt text is becoming less and less relevant mm-hmm we had a comment from uh, Mona. She mentioned that she gets emails all the time for her website and um, about the photo copyright um, oh, infringements. Yeah. And all of their um, imagery is is their own. So they're they're bogus. Ah, uh, yeah, emails. that and happens I've too. That happens too. Yeah. With, uh, with one customer in particular, and this customer, I actually did all of the photography on the site. Uh, so whenever so something comes in, I'm like, yeah, disregard that. It's, it's bullshit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah, there, there are so many fishing expeditions out there when it comes to copyright. I, I haven't seen one for copyright, but when it comes to that, also um, domain information, um, lots of, lots of, um, what, domain registration is another big one. Um, yeah, they'll try and get you. Man, they just don't stop finding yeah. ways to so, to try and mess you up. Let's uh, move on uh, to on-page SEO. I know we already talked about images and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but um, some of the on-page SEO and uh, SEO tools we can mention. I guess I'll mention the ones that I've used most for allowing uh, SEO on the site are uh, Yoast, which probably most people know about because it has been big for a long time, Um, but Rank Math, which is the one that I'm currently using. Um, Both of those, and there are others, but those are two that uh, can be used to help you optimize uh, your blog with everything you need to do on the site. So uh, maybe we'll go through some of the major on-page SEO things um, yeah. that definitely need to be looked at for a blog? Sure, sure. So your title should have your keyword. You have to have H2 tags. You want the alt text. You want an internal link. You want an external link. You want to have a decent amount of content, so not thing content. And um, uh, I recommend having a featured image, although I don't think that has anything to do with SEO, but it really helps when you're sharing your link outwards, like distributing. We'll talk about that next week. Oh, and your meta tag, which will become the little description underneath the name of your page on Google search results. Mm-hmm. I think it's called a SERP. Um, so those yeah. are the basics. Yeah. One of the other things I had mentioned and had come across uh, as a technique to get links or anchors, as they would be called, there, a link it, it can be an external link, an internal link, or a link to something on that specific page, which is referred to as an anchor. Mm-hmm. Um, but adding a table of contents um, at the top of your blog 
can get those links um, that will shoot you down the article directly to where it's answering that question. Um, yeah, and that sounds those great. are uh, very good for um, for blogs, not only for being able to get to your the content that the reader is interested in most right away, um, but also for getting those anchor um, questions in a link that will go down to that section of the page. Right. Yeah, that sounds really great. That sounds great for user experience. Sometimes we don't want the entire blog post. We just want our question answered. But also, please only use that if you're writing long blogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe 750 plus words. Um, otherwise, it's it's just annoying. Which I would say most blogs you should be trying to get at mm -hmm. least over 600 words. Um, I don't know. For it to I don't know about that. Really be <laughs> Well, I think to to really be worthwhile in in ranking and get and get an, uh, your keyword density on there, you should probably be over six hundred for sure for, for I, biggest impact. I would I would say. I think there are lots of ways around that. If you've got video, you certainly don't need that much uh, content. If you're hitting if you're hitting a really niche if if you're niching down your your topics uh, super narrow then uh, sm small blog posts can rank very easily um, with long tail mm -hmm. keywords. And um, I reckon, I think that long tail keyword strategy is a great strategy um, to go with and, um, and being super specific. So instead of writing all the things about the one topic, you get your topic as it's your topic. That's going to be more narrow. I wish I could, I'll come up with an example in the, in the comments below for for somebody to show the difference between a general a general blog topic and, an, and a narrow blog topic but it's like really narrowing down your thesis if you've ever done any academic writing it's a really narrow sliver of of the pie of the whole yeah. topic okay. pie yeah but yeah generally you definitely want to be over 350 words that's a minimum for sure and um, i like to bracket between 350 and like around 500 and then anything between 500 and a thousand and, you know, or if you're doing a really big one, because sometimes you want to make a series out of it instead of one giant long one, mm -hmm. even if it does mm -hmm. rank and you're right, that's good. If you're doing a super long one, um, then that's where the table of contents is perfect. It just works perfectly. But I always think of that as lost opportunity because you really have, five long tail keywords in that one blog article so they could actually rank separately if you if you do separate ones you can uh, as you uh, post the uh, subsequent blogs you can interlink all of them to like right. you know get that uh, going as well yeah we're about time to wrap up and it's probably good because uh, those were all of the points we've already gone through in our <laughs> great in our list so we hit we hit everything we we scheduled excellent. to hit excellent all right so join us next week if you're watching this from another channel we are found in the cyberpunk geek geek marketing marketing mixer, mixer in facebook is it, uh, we, is it a we do <laughs> Yes, I know. It's a mouthful. I never get it right. I feel like such a moron. So that's where we actually are. So you can join us there if you want to ask us questions during the week. Otherwise, you can join us next week for the second part of the blogging, which is going to be distribution. So now that you've written your blog, you've got it all up, you've done up all the beautiful SEO, how do you get it out into the world? Distribution. Join us next week. And that's a topic with you and Phelan. So everybody. Yes, it is. Join that's right. That. All right. See you next week. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. The conversation never stops in our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks. Join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyberpunk geeks to ask your questions, meet new friends, and learn even more about search, social, and websites.